This is one of the later Sharp Pocket computers. It's the PCG 850VS. And this is programmable in quite a few languages. You've got BASIC, um, you've also got a C compiler, which is really an interpreter, and you've also got assembly languages. You've got Z80 assembly, which is what this machine runs on, the processors are Z80, CASTLE, which is an educational assembly language, and PIC assembler. There's actually a PIC assembler built into this machine, and you can attach through the 11 pin connector here, you can attach um, a programmer and program PIC 16F, 84 and 84A chips. Some of the keys and menus are in Japanese, but apart from that, it's really it's a very nice machine and it's pretty easy to use. It's got a nice keyboard which you can actually um, type on. One of the problems is that it doesn't actually have any form of mass storage. So if you spend ages typing in a basic program, there might be one in there. No, nope. because you've got to do that in program mode. A bit irritating. No, there's nothing in there. So, one of the problems with this is that if you spend ages typing a program in and you lose the power for some reason, you lose your programs. There's a text editor and uh, it's a sort of file manager as well. So, I've got some pick assembly programs on the internal RAM disk, so it's now using part of the internal RAM as a RAM disk. But again, that's not going to be any form of permanent storage. So I decided to make a, a gadget that plugs into the 11 pin connector on the side. And yes, I have been hot plugging it. It uses a blue pill and it's got an OLED display here and a uh, SD card here. There's a micro SD plugged in that connector. So on the SD card you can um, put various programs, that's a list of what's on there at the moment. You can scroll down through it and then you can load a program. Let's load a pick test. So I've selected that file and then I'll uh, read it from SD card. It says 548 bytes read. What I can now do is I can set up SIO mode, so now the gadget is set up to accept serial I.O. from the 11 pin connector. So if I go to the text editor, which is the text button, I can then delete what's in there, we can edit it, nothing there. We can come back out and I can then go to SIO mode and load and it's now waiting for data to come over the SIO port. So the 11 pin connector is now configured as a serial I.O. port. And I can then send the data over here, which is 548 bytes going from there to there. We can go back to the text editor and we can now edit, and there's the program, which is a test program for PIC programming. Similarly, if I go to, let's go to basic, go to program mode, list what's in there, there's nothing in there, so I can put a test gadget program and 20 there you go, there's a couple of lines of text. If you then go to the text mode you need to go to basic and turn basic into text which is T and then we're now overwriting the single text editor buffer so the PIC program's now gone and the basic program is now in the editor, and there it is, it has text. You then go back to SIO here, and then uh, if we go over to the gadget, we need to clear the buffer, because otherwise in the buffer you would have had the PIC program, so we can display the buffer, there's nothing there. So if we then save that, it's very short, and it's now gone into the gadget we can now display and there is the data so that's what's just been sent over to the uh, the gadget from the sharp and I can then write that to the SD card 
And it uses an incrementing file number, so it never overwrites anything on the SD card. And then you can take the SD card out, edit stuff on a PC and so on, put it back in, load stuff back in. So now I've got a machine that'll let me store and load stuff onto an SD card, so I don't need to worry about serial cables and a PC or anything. And I can just use this with the machine with no other power. At the moment there's a jumper there which determines whether it's powered externally or from the sharp and at the moment it's being powered by the sharp. I really need to take the power LED off because that's burning power. And another thing that I do tend to do because if you power that off it stays on I do actually hot plug it because you don't have any choice really. You can't turn the power off on the uh, on the 11 pin connector. So it's not just for operating in um, we go in basic mode. It's not just for operating in SIO mode. You, you, there are other options. Um, so in the menu, you can go to the PIO mode, and um, you can read the PIO states. So what this does is it just displays the eight bits as a decimal number on here that the um, that the sharp is actually presenting on the 11 bit 11 pin port so if we go into run mode and I PIO, uh, actually you've got to open the PIO port and then set it as outputs and then put a certain 8 bit pattern so we'll try well, 255 so 255 is now being presented on the 8 line so you can see there's 255 and whatever I type here will actually end up over there. So it's reading in PIO mode, parallel mode, the value here. There's a few jumpers in the prototyping area so you could put any hardware you like and you could get the, uh, the blue pill to drive arbitrary hardware f for you based on the PIO um, value that's coming out here. So you can do all sorts of things with that. Um, and um, it could operate in other modes. At the moment they're the only two modes I've got. The SIO mode for serial uh, file transfer and the PIO mode there. But I think that's going to be quite useful. So you can might attach some more hardware to it. There's a few problems with this board so I might do a version 2. Tidy it up a bit. But um, yeah, it seems to work pretty reliably. So I quite like that.